المرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا قرب عيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارئ وسلم وتتعلم وتعنيم وتذكر وتذكير ونفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقرب وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم من كتاب من كتاب من كتاب منهج العابدين الى جنه رب العالمين الإمام المجدد حجة الإسلام والمسلمين زين الدين أبي حامد محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن أحمد الغزالي قوسي الطبراني الشافعي رضي الله عنه ونفعنا الله به وبيعون في الدارين إلى أن قال I from the book in the Abidin to the gardens uh, the path of the worshipful servants to the garden of the Lord of the worlds uh, is uh, written by the the renewer of his time and of our time the proof of this religion and of the muslims the beauty or the zain al din and abi hamid father of hamid muhammad bin muhammad bin muhammad bin ahmed al ghazali al qusi al tabrani al shafi'i radiyallahu anhu wa nafa'ana bihi wa bi'ulumi fi ad-darin ila an qal na'am satakallam na'am la la a'rif ani أنا كنا تردنا من أي شيء من هنا من هنا سلام بسم الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد. okay so we have reached the part last week where we were speaking about um, the the verse in the Quran where Allah سبحانه وتعالى has promised about risk okay, last week. okay I need the last night. I can go to the correct steps. It's all the way down. <laughs> so, hey. Hold up. Okay, we, re- we, we stopped at the area of... We, at the, at we stopped... We spoke about in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed uh, His creation that with them being created, He has promised a uh, risk for them. Right? And then um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath. Right, uh, by himself, he has promised it first. The first, the first one is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, has informed the human being that in, uh, in 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 the creation of the human being, or in, in, in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala creating the creation itself. So there's a human being, but the entire creation that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with creation comes risky. Right, so it's just as how you are created, you will have your risky. Right? It's just as how you are created. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not create the creation without guaranteeing for the creation the risk for the uh, for, for his creation uh, it's already been guaranteed uh, by him subhanahu wa ta'ala and we went into the verses of the quran let's speak about it in the second um in in, in, in in the second level of this is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you know after having said right that creation comes with risk it's already said you know, it comes with risk there's something what else do you want Right, your creation has come. You have come. You come into this world with your risky, right? and that, that human beings, um, when you are human beings, when you are when you know when you have a, when you have a child, the child is born with his risk. You know, um, the, the 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 guest comes to your house with his risk to take his risk, and so there is no you know um, in the sense uh, that they have taken from your risk. No such thing as someone taking your risk. 
everyone has their own risk when there is, has been a portion for them but it's a matter of whether it was done in a in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in a way that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, that is the first thing then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised after having said it uh, he promised it then uh, the, the, third, the third level was that after having said it and promised it he subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a vow and oath I buy it uh, that he will indeed give give the human being or give his creation its risk. So the first part is with with creation comes risk. The second part is uh, that he has become a promise from that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised it onto his creation. And the third one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken an oath by himself. Uh, for uh, that he has taken oath by himself, uh, where he swears by, by himself the Lord of the of the heavens and the earth, that for surely it is true uh, that you will be given your risk. Uh, it's just as how you are speaking. This is how you will be given your risk. Allah subhanahu and in fact, mashallah, you know, in the commentary of this verse, right, that this is how you are speaking. You know that you can't deny that you are speaking right now. You know, and that the human being knows that uh, in his uh, in his ability to speak, right, Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who gave you your health. He's the one who gave you your your organs, he's the one who gave you language, he's the one who, who taught you how to use your tongue. And all of it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The entire, the entire affair is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the human being does not, does not doubt at all right, that he is able to speak when he wants to, wants to speak. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, Allah takes away from the human being the ability to speak. That's what happened to Imam Ghazali himself. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, if, you, if you've read the, the biography of Imam Ghazali, uh, the point whereby he was, he was forced to leave his position you know, as a dean in the university at the time uh, was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away from him his ability to speak. Right? So and, and because he you know he's been going back and forth, you know, if you go go into his into his uh, biography, you'll find that this has happened to Imam Ghazali, right? That he was in his position for, for quite some time and he excelled, you know, where he was. Imam Ghazali. He writes about it himself, you know, as a, 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 the, the, how he was delivered from error. You know how he, um, you know how he came out of the situation, and then Mughazali in the sense that, that he, he 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 was going back and forth, you know, back and forth about leaving his position and and, and seeking and searching, until eventually Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, uh, placed it on him by taking away his ability to speak, and that's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it's your risk. I say, if your risk, you know, at that point in time, even the number of words, uh, even even the number of breaths that you take. All of it has been counted and all of it is settled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is from by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, so after having, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded uh, for the human being to place the trust in Him. So now it's a commandment. So the second reason why a person should have, should have tawakkul, the first reason was to, to free yourself and to free your, your heart you know, of being occupied with something that you're not, it's not on you to be occupied with or it's not on you to, be, to worry about and that is the risk right so to free your heart right, from this so that you can go so that you can freely worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and easily worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the second reason right, why this is done uh, the second reason for, for a person to, to strive to have uh, tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereby he has reinformed us he has given us he has, he has written for us our risk he has promised it to us. He has uh, taken an oath by it, and then he has commanded. Uh, so the last, the, the, the fourth part here, the Imam Ghazali uh, quotes, which that we actually went through last week. This is from from last week's revision. Eh? Uh, that he actually commanded it onto the human being, fatawakkal. Uh, so to have tawakkul. Uh, so it's a commandment on the human being to have uh, to, to to rely on the one who is alive, who does not die. Right, uh, and do it uh, to, to, to glorify him, right, to, to exalt him, and to praise him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was taken uh, last week you know, in our commentary on this, uh, on this part. Right. So after all of that, you know, after all of that, right, still you know, the human being who it has, has fallen into a lack of, of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not understood what is reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, whether, whether they think that, um, that, that reliance would mean uh, uh, that the reliance and effort, right, are one or the uh, are things that are basically is is one or the other. Right? Whereas we know that for, for, as I'm going through this chapter with Imam Ghazali, right, he's been you know informing us that there are two separate things. Right? Reliance is a is a form of worship, and uh, and and to put in effort is a form of worship. They're both forms of worship. 
you don't do without one without the other, right? Nor are they, you know, uh, nor, nor do they actually link to, 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 to each other. Right? So when you put in effort, right, someone could, could, could be putting in effort and have absolutely no reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And someone could be not be putting in effort and also have absolutely no reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that just because you put in effort or you don't put in effort that you have reliance or you don't have reliance. Right? It's, it's something that is separate. They're, they're both separate things. Right? So it, um, it's, it's a matter of the heart. Right? So when you, when, you, when, you take, when you put in the effort that you, you depend on what you do, you depend on yourself in any way. Right? Do you think that you are the doer of things? Do you, do you are the one who actually brings... Uh, the food to your, um, you are the one who brings uh, the food to the to the table, and so mashallah, you know, subhanallah. And in looking at this at this matter, right, that Allah subhanahu wa taala has, um, you know, has, has already determined for us our risk, and so it is a matter of obedience uh, in in taking in in uh, in relying on Allah on Allah subhanahu wa taala, and it's a matter of obedience in uh, in put in your effort in obeying Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right, that he has, he has, he has, he has uh, commanded for, for, for human beings right, to, uh, to take the means and to, and to put in effort, right, but not to rely on it. And this is why the next few verses later on, we will go, we will go into it as we go into the definition of, of tawakkul, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about um, that, in, in, uh, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الله. Right, so you know, so so when you have you know firm resolve on what you're about to do, you've done istikhara, you've done istishara, you've taken all the means, right? Then the reliance is not on uh, whatever you have done from before that. That is part of the obedience, and the reliance is still on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it's always been Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and on no one else. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So the last time, our last lesson, right, we were actually at, um, we went through the, 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 we went through the uh, words of the angels. Okay. Right, we went through the words of the angels. Right, when, they, uh, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, revealed the verses uh, by the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and he, takes, he takes an oath by himself subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the angels, right, they, uh, in, the, in the commentary of this, that the angels say that the sons of Adam are ruined, Right, they have angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so they say, Halaka Banu Adam, Aghdabu Rabb, Hatta Aqsama Lahum ala Arzaqihim. Right, they have, they have angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that way, right, and they, and they are destroyed. Right, and then we have come to the story of, of Sayyidina Uwais al Qarni, right, uh, whereby he was, uh, whereby, whereby he was asked about Allahumma Sayyidina Mawan Uwais al Qarni. أنه قال لو عبدت الله عبادة أهل السماوات والأرض لما تقبل منك حتى تصدقه. So so the Nabi Muhammad said that if you were to worship Allah with the worship of all of the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, you would not have um, that you would you, it would not be accepted from you until you believe him. You know until you believe his words, you know, and they say, how how do you believe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? That does that mean that you believe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Right, that you be you know uh, takunu aminan bima tu kafila Allahu Taala laka min amr rizqika wa tara jasadaka farigan li ibadatihi. Right, that if you were to if you were to um to be at peace with what Allah has promised you with. Right, so you don't doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is, you know, there is a, a, a level of doubt when, when one um, sees the need right, to, uh, uh, to, to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, on a matter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already said that He will handle subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so if, 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 uh, and that's how we see the story of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. The story of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam that when Nabi Ibrahim, uh, you know, when, when Allah gave the commandment to Nabi Ibrahim right, uh, to call the people to Hajj, and Nabi Ibrahim said, well, there's nobody here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that it is on you to call and on me to bring. Right? Your job is to call. Right? Understand what's your job. Right? What, what is on you? It is on you right, to, uh, uh, to, 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 to dig the, uh, to plow the ground. It's on you to collect the seeds. It's on you to do whatever you want to do. And even if you don't do it, it will still happen. Whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, to, wants for it to happen or not, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide. And you can do everything possible to have it grow if it's 
not going to grow, it will not grow. <laughs> so it's, it's on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it does not mean that just because you took all the means, it will happen. It will, nothing guarantees you that it will happen. The only one that guarantees you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in Surah Waqi'ah, in the, in the session of Surah Waqi'ah, of the science of the human being, and look, look at the science around you, you know, about the, about the, uh, about the, uh, the money, right, and then about the, uh, the zara, right, about, about, you know, about your plantation, then about um, the water, right, and then about the fire. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in Surah Waqi'ah, sorry, in Surah Waqi'ah, right, about the signs, this is Surah Yasin, in Surah Waqi'ah, right, about, the, the, about, about the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid out for, for, for the human being, right, in Surah Waqi'ah. So again, in, in each time, right, it speaks about, you know, the things that we need, and it happens like on a, on a, on a daily basis, right? Things that happen to you on a daily basis. Right? That, that are you the one who ensures that this thing grows, or the one are you the one who ensures that, that the water will fall will, will fall on the sky? You don't you don't do anything basically. Right? All that is on you is to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? So that's which is why you know sometimes um, when it comes to to taking you know uh, taking taking lengths, right? To um, you know in, in wanting to get something. You know, in wanting to attain something in this dunya, right? It is it is a matter of focusing yourself on what is most pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and not to think that if I don't do it this way, then I won't. You know, I won't. The moment you think that that I won't get it, you know, it won't come or it won't. The moment you think that you're already placing ability and you're placing power in yourself, you're placing you know a reliance on yourself. And so if you think that, if you think that you know if if I don't if I don't do it this way and it's a haram way for example like it's not one of the ways that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put has, has has allowed us to do it in that way, and there are many situations and a lot of examples actually in this in whereby whereby because of a lack of uh, tawakkul right, that people um, take means a haram, right, thinking that I have to it has to be done this way it has to. Right, uh, without trusting Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, so like for example, if let's say someone is, um, uh, like 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 if someone wants things that you know the only way, right, to get uh, a position in 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 office or, or whatsoever, right, is to um to cheat because everybody else is cheating, you know, or to slander because everyone is slandering, or to backbite or to whatsoever. They they think the only it's only by this way, right, that you can actually get you know what you want to get. I, or Allah Alam, you know, there, there are many, so many examples that <laughs> I'm not sure what to say or to say, but there are many examples in society. If you think about it, people are relying on this plan, on that plan, you know, on this uh, deal, on that deal. And if you don't do that, then you will not be protected. If you don't do that, you will not have the, the, uh, the financial ability. If you don't do that, you will not, you know, and, and they place, you know, reliance and ability and power in some, in some, some way on these things. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one right, who has promised us that it's on Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do as you are told in obedience to Him. And that's it. Right, so, so believe in Allah. So how do you believe Allah? So you, you, how do you believe Allah? Believe Him when He says that He has guaranteed for you your sustenance. Right? Believe Him when He says it, uh, and then you find your body free to worship Him. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. When Haram bin Hayyan bin Uwais al Qarni, he asked him, uh, "Where would you instruct me to recite?" And he said, "MashaAllah." <laughs> so he came. So the, the, uh, the story goes, right? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. لقد قال له حرم بن حيان أين تأمرني أن 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 أقيم. So where do you instruct me to go? And he said to him, you know, and he pointed, you know, Uwais al Qarni, he pointed him to go to Sham, and then he said, "How will I survive there? You know, how will I find food there?" And then this. And and subhanallah, you know, this is something that uh, I mean, <laughs> to ask Sayyidina Uwais al Qarni, <laughs> you don't ask this question. <laughs> right, because if you already asked him where to go, he said, Go there. And then he says, How am I going to find rescue there? Just go. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will, um, who, who has taken care for your rescue. And Sayyidina Uwais al Qarni said, Uff. I said to him, Uff. Uff. Right? Like, you know, in a sense, go like, don't bother me. These hearts who have no trust. I don't, don't, don't come near me. Go away. Because <laughs> you know, you, just because of your lack of your lack of uh, trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, your lack of reliance in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, he said, "Ufin, you know, ufin ni hazi al qulub." Right? Maybe go, maybe they, they go away. There's this these hearts, right? That has been mixed up in these hearts, uh, uh, doubt, 
a doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a doubt in the creator of the heavens and the earth <laughs> it has come into these hearts. While the hearts are beating and pumping by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the same hearts doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so hence, this counsel you know, or advice uh, does, not, uh, is it, uh, does, does, not, uh, does not benefit him. Uh, or does not benefit these hearts, does not benefit them. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And the next part that Imam Ghazali speaks about, so they're all the examples of how the scholars to understand uh, that you don't worry when it comes to risk. You don't worry. You take effort, but that's part of obedience. You don't worry. I don't, you don't think, you know, that, that, oh, everybody else already has this, or everybody else already has that, everybody else already has whatever. It's not, it's not a, it's, it's everyone has their lot. Alas. <laughs> right, and it's for you what's for you. Right, so if you start comparing yourself to other people, right, then you're going to start comparing yourself to what's not meant for you. Then you're going to be upset forever. <laughs> right, because you're trying to, you're trying to get what's not written for you. You know, and even know what is written for you or not. And you're, and you're, and you're, and you're, you're, you're obsessing yourself and occupying yourself for what's for you know, it was, it's never, it's never for you. You're gonna waste your time trying to, trying to get something that was, is just, like, you know, mashallah, you know, like, like, for example, like, like, you know, wanting to, to have a, a, a risk that was in a different zaman, for example. Right, you'll be thinking to yourself, like, it's just not, it's not a smart thing to do, right? to, to aim, to gain a risk that was in the time of, uh, you know, like Imam Ghazali or, or some, some goal that was in the time of, of Allahu Alam Hu. And you think to yourself, like, why would someone do that? Why would someone try and, you know, strive to, to aim to get, you know, some goal that existed in the time of uh, Nabi Musa, alayhi salam? You'll be thinking, that's impossible. It's not for you, not in that same time. And the same thing, it's not in your, it's not in your, in your, in your, in your, in your, it's not in your portion. You're meant to live in this time. And what is supposed to come to you is supposed to come to you. If it's, never, it's not going to come to you, it's never going to come to you. You're, just, you're going to just frustrate yourself right? and, and get upset. And even worse, shaitan comes in, shaitan makes you upset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah has already told you that he's, he's, he's handling it, just all that's on you is obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't doubt. Right? It, it, it is really a, it's really a training. It's a training. Don't be scared. Don't doubt. Right. Do what we know from the Prophet وسلم, Give out in charity right. Give out you know, uh, uh, do, do acts of goodness right. Do acts of charity Help uh, other people Do as commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And one of the things that we know That when if they will come to the one Who really wants you know, your risk to flow right. Obedience to the parent right. That is the one thing you, you dedicate your life to Obedience to your parent there is when the rescue will flow for you. Right, so this is all, you know, mashallah, it's all, uh, uh, all under obedience. It's all under obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mashallah. And at the end of the day, it's really focused on that. It's really focused on that. Right, so, and then there's, there's, there's so much, actually, so much commentary on this. But, alhamdulillah. Okay. <laughs> A lot of commentary on this. But I want this, you all to just think. You know, sometimes, you know, um, these are parts about if you were to say certain things, it might rub people the wrong way. If you see certain things, <laughs> right? But but it is it's a lot of commentary on this when it comes to trusting in Allah, reliance on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, taking means a haram, taking means a halal, you know, understanding where the food comes, understanding where your family comes, understanding from from who, right? who is the one who who guards and protects and gives Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? and then it's having tranquility. Right, in that, in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has arranged everything for you, all that's on you is obedience. And the same thing is repeating over and over again in, this, in these chapters. Allahumma sari ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so he said here, right, uh, Nabashan is, is a person who actually, um, he does, he, they, they keep digging out graves right, and uh, to, to take the shrouds, the thieves of shrouds. Right? There are people who, are like, who, who do that. In the past, especially because you know, Allah you know, they, they, they do that. They basically, they, they do that. <laughs> they will dig up graves and they, 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 will, they will steal the kafan, the kafan cloth. They will steal it and they will sell it. <laughs> so, hmm? they sell. Yeah, they steal. They steal kafan cloth and they sell. Right? So these are sti- the, the thieves. Uh, thieves. Right? So in the past, it used to be. Um, I mean, people, people, people are poor. Right? So they find it's the, it's the most easiest way to the easiest way to actually just you know. Uh, steal, steal from the dead. Of course, haram, haram, haram. 
Right, so, so it was related that a, a thief of shrouds repented from his sin at the hands of Abu Yazid al-Bustami. When the Sheikh asked the thief about the graves that he has, and they, let, and they always ask them about the graves, right, because these thieves, they see things right, in their graves, uh, and they've seen many graves, so they see all kinds of things right, in these graves. Right, so, <laughs> right, uh, and they still do it, they're not afraid, they're not afraid. Right, and for them, it's not, I mean, it, it, like, mashallah, what is, what is more scary probably is that if they've seen all these things in their, in their graves and still not repent, that's even scarier, <laughs> right? Than any ghost or jinn or whatever that you're going to see. It's not as scary as someone seeing sign after sign after sign and not repenting. That's even more scary. This, this is scary because, I mean, you don't put power or might with, 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 with the creation, right? The creator that you are disobeying, right? He has the power and he has the might. So if they see the creation, they are scared of the creation, not scared of the creator, then in a practice is all wrong, you know what are you scared of? And subhanallah. And so eventually he did uh, Taubat, <laughs> he Taubat, you know, from what he did, and he, he saw enough, you know, for in, the, in the graves. And he said to him, I stole about a thousand shrouds from the graves, and I did not find their faces facing the Qibla except two people. It means all of them, they, are, they, they were flipped the other way. And you know when you, you, when you bury the, the, the deceased, you face them towards the Qibla, and you uncovered the faces right uh, towards the Qibla. But he said when he, when he dug up the graves, he found them all pointing the other way, right, except for two of them. And, who, and, and, and Abu Yazid al-Bustani, he knew what was the reason. And it was that how unfortunate it was that the majority of these people, or those who were turned away, they were people who did not uh, trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did not rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their sustenance. And right, that they trust it, they they rely on themselves. Right, so even you, you know, in your grave, everything about everything about you is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, so and how unfortunate are those people? They're weary over sustenance, cause their faces to be directed away from the qibla. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so Sina Abu Yazid, uh, he said, Masakin ulaik. Right, how 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 unfortunate how unfortunate they are. <laughs> right, their their own their own worry and their own concern over the risk like, has caused their faces to be turned away from the qibla. Right. And some of uh, he, uh, also mentioned some of their companions have mentioned to them right, that how you know are you safe? How is it that you are safe by your iman? Right, and he said that and he said and he, and he was said right, that for surely right, the one whose iman is safe are the ones who rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so even by your iman you don't rely on yourself yeah, your iman is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve it for you so that you keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, to, 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 to keep your iman strong to preserve your iman and it's one of the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right, in, uh, when people leave his presence when they travel right, that he will entrust right, or, or, or he will entrust their iman and uh, and their religion and the end of their affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sunnah of Rasulullah to say that right, whenever somebody uh, you know, uh, gives you, uh, uh, bids you farewell, you know, and they say that I entrust your iman and your, and your religion and the end of your affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's on to say, وَقَبِلْنَا الْوَدَعِ right, and, we, and we accept right, this you know, entrustment, we, we accept. Uh, we accept this entrustment that we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the iman of a person. Right? So, uh, and of his family. Right? So even back in, in the dua, in the dua of travel, in the khulasa, you have it. Right? So if you look at the back of the khulasa, right, there is a dua for travel. Right? Where um, in this dua, Allahumma salli ala sallam. Right? Whereby in this dua, there is, um, that you, you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, that you are the one that I trust with those people whom I, whom I have left back home. So in the du'a, in the khulasa, you can find it at the back of the, back of the khulasa, the du'a of travel. Before you travel, you always re recite the du'a. Like, no, no, inshallah, now you don't travel that much. So maybe you travel from one part of the other part of Singapore. And yes, at least you, you, you do the du'a and you just make it a habit for ourselves to use du'a. Now that not, we don't really leave the house very much, then maybe just you know, um, make it a habit when you leave the room. Right, that you intend, uh, that you know, uh, that you see Allah's protection from, from, from causing misguidance or being misguided. And the du'a in, in Bitul Hidayah. Right, so even in leaving your room, make that du'a. Make it, make it a habit. That when you, whenever you, you, you leave your room, leave your house, 
to make all these du'as and you, you, to, 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 to impress upon yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides and He is the one who protects it, not you. And you're not the one who's doing anything. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so, it, uh, and so he makes dua and then he says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve and reform us by His mercy and not to hold us to account for what we are deserving of. For surely He is the most merciful of those with mercy. Right, and for hadhi, hadhi. I assume it is dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala and yuslihana bi fadlihi wa la yuakhidhana bima nahnu ahluhu inna khu arhamu rahimin fa hadhi hadhi I said amin amin ya rabbal alamin I did the dua of the great imam his dua is mustajab mashallah and this was done to the end of his life with full sincerity to lead people to the path so then he says fa in kulta and then if you were to say and so tell us, so if you were to say, so tell us uh, what is the reality of tawakkul uh, and what is the, um, and, and what is the, the, the hukum of, of tawakkul uh, or what is the, the ruling of tawakkul, uh, you know, what, what, what do you say uh, and what is it that on, on, what is on a person, uh, what, is, what, is, what is on a person with respect, with respect to the affairs of his rizq. So if this is tawakkul, right, then what is on me respect to, with respect to uh, the affairs of his risk? Is it in the red book? In this book? At the end of which page? One for it still. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is it anyway? Right. Right, so he says here now. Right, so so he says if I allow to know. أنه إنما يتبين لك هذا في أربعة فصول. right so Imam Al Ghazali he says that so no that this will be made clear for you in four in four matters you know of four sections right and uh, and he, and, he, and here is the reality of tawakkul right it is it is made clear in four sections the meaning of tawakkul right uh, the the lafaz right lafzi tawakkul to understand the very word tawakkul right? where is it coming from. The second one, Maudi'ahi, right, the very place uh, of tawakkul, like the, of tawakkul the, the very place of tawakkul in the Quran, like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks about tawakkul in the Quran, wahaddihi, uh, uh, right, the definition of tawakkul, right, and wahisunihi, right, and how, you know, how it is uh, inculcated or how it is uh, uh, attained, right, the attainment of tawakkul itself. Uh, so here he mentions about this, about this. So how do you understand tawakkul? You know, how do you, uh, because to, to be able to inculcate something, you have to understand the reality of it. And uh, what does it mean? So from the word tawakkul itself, uh, so the word tawakkul, uh, so as for the word tawakkul itself, as for the word tawakkul itself, as for the word tawakkul itself, فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ تَوَكُّلٌ تَفَعُلْ It's from the form تَفَعُلْ مِنَ الْوَكَالَ It's from the word that means Right, to for, for they use for the word wakil, right? It's, you know, wakil, right? It's, uh, one that has been placed, uh, uh, the one that has been entrusted, and right? that is the wakil, right? So, it, uh, so the mutawakkil, right? Ala ahadin, right? So, if someone is so the, so the one who is who has tawakkul or is reliant on someone, right? It means that this person, it means he has taken this person, right, to be in a position. Of full, um, like you can fully, you can fully depend on this person. You can fully lean on this person, and that this person knows what he is doing, right? So bimanzil, so you take him, so you take him in in a in a position bimanzilatil wakilil qa'im bi amrihi, right? So someone who is not only that, not only um, is is able to do what what he is uh, given to do. Like he is the best of the one who is able to do it, and the one you can trust that they will not mess up. Right? So, so you have placed him in a position, you know, uh, uh, to who will who will fulfill uh, what is placed on him. That is the wakil. Right? So that is the, the reality of the word wakil in in in, uh, in the language, right? And the one who has guaranteed the rectification of matters, and the one who is enough. Right? So, it's, uh, for example, if someone last week we give an example of of a workplace. And if someone says to you, okay, I have, I, I handle, you know, I, it's, it's on me. I'm, I'm going to handle it. So you know, okay, you know, halas, you know, so and so, okay, I know her. Right? If she says she's going to handle it, then I don't have to worry at all. Uh, because you know that she's done it so many times 
and then her character or her behavior or her, or, or her traits is such that if she says, I'm going to handle it, she will handle it. And in fact, before you, 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 before the, the, the time that you place, and in fact, better than what you even expect of her. Right, so that's why when, so, so that is the one that you place, the, you, you have, in a sense, relied on. Right, that is from the word, the, the word wakil. And that, that, for, that, you know, that in a sense, they do not, you don't have any worry at all. When you hear that so and so is on the matter, okay, ha, let's, uh, I don't have to worry. Uh, so what more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and he has informed us that he has taken it you know, into his, uh, it is, is on him uh, to give human beings a risky. Uh, so where is the worry coming from? And uh, why are we worrying uh, with, uh, with regards to this matter? Uh, so there's no, so that's, that's, that's the main, the main uh, definition. Eh? And this is what it's all about. Uh, that you that you know that the one that you are entrusting or the one that you trust, the one that you're relying on, that you know that they, they, will, not, uh, they will not let you down. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, we are the ones who let him down. And we are the ones who support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones who uh, don't stand up to what we have promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives more. Right, and he even gives to those who disobey him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, but yet, you know, at the same time, this, the human being still has this worry and when it comes to entrusting our matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad because when someone has, has you know, has, has uh, entrusted a matter, right, you know, if it's from the word, uh, then you fawwidu, right, that you, that you ent- completely place it in the, like, in the, in the hands, you know, of so and so, you give them the key or you give them the, you know, all of the issues, you know, you, you pass to them, you know they will handle it. And this is on a human on a human level. So what more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth? This is why every day we read uh in Allah Basirum Right. Every day we read that we uh, we entrust our affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who is uh, he sees his creation before you sleep, the dua that if you enter the dawah, it's supposed to memorize his dua, the dua of before sleep, right, in entrusting my affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For what to? The dua, before, the, before, the, before you uh, sleep, the last thing that you say, and if you die on that, you will die on fitrah, right? Is it not in, in the... Yes, Allahumma inni aslam tu waji ilaik Fa wattu amri ilaik Fa wattu amri ilaik Right, I have entrusted my affair to you Fa wattu amri ilaik Is that in the Dawra? It is, can? Right, it is, right It's, it's, it's in uh, Zakhira Musharafa It's in Hadith in Zakhira Musharafa as well mm-hmm. It should be there also, I think Right <laughs> no, I, mean, I thought that's part of the syllabus, right? It's part of the syllabus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the Hadith. It's in the Hadith. Yeah. There are several narrations of it. If you look at, um, if you're wondering the narrations, eh? the narrations in, um, there are several narrations for it. Uh, in the Khulasa, you may find something slightly different right? in the Khulasa. Right? So, and depending on what Khulasa you're looking at, also, there are different narrations. So, if there's a slight difference, it's okay right? because there are different uh, narrations for it. Mm-hmm. You go to the Sarihin, you can go to you know a few other different uh, books you can find. But of the of the, of similar meaning. Uh, of similar meaning. Why? Right. I thought you all memorized some time ago already. Because it's on the poster it's also. Special. It's on the poster, a sunnah a day. The poster beloved by the beloved. <laughs> it's on my Instagram. It's one of the questions in the exam. I know, I saw it. <laughs> it's in the poster in my room, yes. <laughs> Hafa, please memorize the. Huh? Now, there is, okay, there, there are a few nations. There's one that goes, Wajah to Wajhi Ilik. Aslam to Nafsi Ilik. Wajah to Wajhi Ilik. So there are different um, there are different narrations about it. So you can find it. It's in the Khulasa, yes. Do'a before sleep. <laughs> it's right in the Khulasa. <laughs> Do'a before sleep, you find the last thing there. Right, so it's right there. <laughs> okay. In the Khulasa, in the phone also has, the app also has it. It's everywhere. <laughs> Habib has made sure that, you know, that, that uh, his students memorize this Do'a. 
and act on it and read it and last thing that you read before you fall asleep and if you fall asleep without reading it or if you fall asleep and then you wake up and you read it but if you read it and then you say something else and then you, fell, and then you want to sleep you read it again right, in doing this but then memorize it in the first place <laughs> and the dua mashallah and, and the one who dies on this dies on fitrah Right, mashallah. Reminder, eh? reminder right, for us to whatever we have studied, put it into practice. Inshallah. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in the exam paper. Inshallah. I think was I think I think I saw it. I can't remember. I was thinking through. Allahumma salli ala sidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala sidina Muhammad. Um, as for Allahumma salli ala. All right, so. So this is so so the Arabic word means the one who depends on some other person for his needs and affairs. Men relied upon and trusted in the work. Uh, the man relied upon and trusted, right? He solves all problems of a needy person, right? And you you trust him in in a way whereby you have no worry whatsoever, right? So in taking the effort and putting in the you know uh, putting the usaha is it usaha and the effort, right? You do it out of obedience. And you don't have worry coming to you. I don't have worry. I just let it let it be. It's okay. I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, so now the place whereby the word tawakkul is used in the Quran. We'll go through that. Tamam. Right, the place by which the word tawakkul is used in the Quran. The first part, right, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, it is in when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about his uh, division you know, of things. Right? So know that the word tawakkul, it is a word that is used in three parts in the Quran or in three, in, uh, in three matters. Right? The first one right, is in the, in, in, in the situation of division, right? the division of, of, of rizki right? to, the, to those on, on this earth. Right? And this is something that uh, the one who, is, who trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, that he understands that it will not miss him what has been uh, put aside for him, right? and that uh, uh, right? and that the ruling will never change, no matter what he does. If something is not meant for him, it will never come to him. And so, if something is meant for him, it will, it will definitely come to him. And here, this is one of the injunctions of the Sharia: is wajib eh? uh, to uh, to obey right? in this situation, whereby not to fight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Uh, if he has decreed something, uh, not to fight it or not to um, be, uh, in a sense, uh, complain about it or, the, or, or be upset about it, it's a decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something that you have no control over. Uh, so this, is, this is the first one. Eh? Uh, in the, in the, it's an injunction in the sharia. That's the first one. Number two right, is that the word tawakkul is used in a way of giving success to a person. So the first one, you know, um, the word tawakkul is used in, a, in, 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 in division, right? Whereby what is for you is for you and what's not for you is never for you. Then for you to have tranquility with that and not to, like, uh, and, 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 and not, to, not to fight it in a sense by saying, like, you know, by, 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 by blaming people or by, by doing things that you're going to force for it to come to you in any way. Like, it's not things will in all forms of disobedience and can be disobedience and you still will not get what you're trying to get but it's not meant for you it will, you will, it will still not come to you and you're going to tire yourself out trying to get what is not meant for you right, in, the, in the first place Allahumma salli ala sallam Muhammad and the second one is when you get the nusra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the divine help or assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the verse that we mentioned just now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, and, and if you have done your uh, the istishara, if you've done if you done if, if you done the consultation and an istikhara, then tawakkal. Right? So so you 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 done you know whatever you done your, your, your own efforts, right, that you have uh, asked around, you have uh, you have done your istikhara, and wherever it points you to and whatever doors open for you, whatever doors close for you, right, that is for you. And right? to have to have complete tranquility. This kind of chapter is like mashallah. It helps people get through life. And it helps people get through, um, uh, let go of hopes that they had. You know, or it helps people get over things. And right? it's not meant for them. It just helps them. It's not meant for you. Khalas. Right? And then carry on. Right? Carry on with life. Especially if the door has been completely closed on you. It's closed. 
right? Carry on, right? What is what is important is your affair for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's it. I said, there's no like you know no like, don't don't like say if if you know. Of course, you can regret in the sense of you will change you will, you will change the way you decide things or do this in the future. And if you were to regret, regret that you committed a sin. You know, regret that you should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regret that. Right? But don't, you know, don't, 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 um, in a sense, beat yourself up in a way that paralyzes yourself thinking that you could have changed right things. Right? Because you're not in control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control. All that is on you is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the thing about it is that the human being um, occupies his mind. I, on things that he has no control over at all, and from there he goes into a lot of anxiety, right? a lot of um, they go into depression, they go into worry, they go into all kinds of things, right? Because because you just you're seeing yourself without seeing your Creator, right? Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay, I think there are questions here. Let's see there are questions. Yeah, it was in the exam there. <laughs> Allahumma salli ala sallina Muhammad Okay, so there were questions Allahumma salli ala sallina Muhammad Okay, alhamdulillah We will stop there for today, inshallah I think next time round I will go through in the next part Okay, any questions? That's why it just says that knowledge is light and lack of knowledge is darkness. Knowledge. When study. The same thing like, like someone would say like how you know something is halal and something is haram. Go and belajar. Go and study. Right. How else would you know? Right. I mean, we're not, we're not born knowing. Right. So it's because everyone else is doing it. Right. Um, that's why the hadith and the al-halal al-bayin and haram al-bayin وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَاتٌ لَا يَعْرِفُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ Right, the hadith goes that the halal is clear, haram is clear, between them are uh, matters that agree. Most people don't know. Most people don't know these matters. Majority. Right? The scholars they do. Our ulama they do. And you already them on our behalf. Right, so it's on the awam right, to go and ask the, 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 the alim. Right? Go and ask, if you don't know, ask those who know. Right, so not to depend on what the common person does, right, but to go and depend on the one who has his thiqah, you know, somebody who has you know, credibility and integrity in the religion. Ask them. Right, what is the, Imam Ghazali is one of them. <laughs> Imam Ghazali. You ask Imam Ghazali. You say, oh, okay. <laughs> Imam Ghazali says this. Right, MashaAllah. You know, he has one sincerity. sincerity right, he, will, he will say clearly you know, what, you know, what the matter is all about. Right, so, so anything in religion, you know, that, like a lot of things in religion, people don't know. Even even laws of, of prayer, of aura, of menses, of a lot of fiqh, right? We don't we don't know. A majority of us we don't know. And the only way to remove uh, ignorance is to seek the light of knowledge. There's no there's no other way right, to do that. Right, or to seek the people of knowledge and to follow their light, right, and follow them to, uh, as to what they do, right, in their in their lives. In every matter, in every matter, in the religion. I have a question. <laughs> After doing istikhara when bad things happen, uh, how do you convince ourselves that Allah's decision at the time is the result? Wait, okay. So someone asked the question that. Uh, 
وصلا استخارة صلا استخارة can we combine with the duha صلا استخارة the need for صلا استخارة is a tricky question but the need for صلا استخارة can be combined with any um, prayer it's one of those needs that they need to enrich it goes under the other needs so you can always uh, put it in someone asks if you do istikhara the more you do istikhara and if you act on the istikhara answer right, so whether it's clear or not clear right, sometimes it's clear in the dream and sometimes it's not really clear but doors close on you right, so the more you do istikhara there is a tafweeb, right? that means you have entrusted your affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't resist like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause to happen around you so whatever happens even if it seems bad it's not bad right? um, the only thing that is considered to be bad is when a person loses their faith and they are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they go, they go in distance so whatever happens of physical things in this dunya like diseases, loss of life you know anything like it can be harsh but for as long as the iman of a person is intact, you know, and inshallah stronger, inshallah, then it is a good thing. Right? But if someone loses their iman, then you know uh, that you know when when you when this kind of matters, you have yourself to blame, right? About the you know about not relying on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, Allah Masjidah Sayyidina Muhammad. Right? So, so you ask, how can we convince ourselves of Allah's decision at the time if the result has become bad for us? Right? That. Allah, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been the wali of your affair right? He has been the one in charge of your affair from before you were born right? And from before you were born, you know, subhanAllah right? Allah has been the one to handle everything for you whether you realize it or not right? So all the more, you know, with, without asking him subhanahu wa ta'ala So what more if you ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala You know, you only trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this matter Allahumma salli sayyidina Muhammad um, right, istikhara, istikhara, and istishara. Right, there's, there's two. Right, istikhara that you would um, you pray to rakats, right, and that you would uh, 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 you and you make dua istikhara after your your prayer. It's just, it's it's recommended in the, in the khulas. You can find it also two rakats to pray or four rakats to pray every day. You niat together your duha prayer, um, and then you do a dua istikhara am. Right, it means for it's a general du'a for whatever will happen for yourself and your family and your uh, loved ones that you decide what is most beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in your life, in the matters of your of your risk, in the matters of your doing, of your akhirah, right, in all matters. Right, it's a general du'a. It's a general istikhar to do every day. Right, so istishara is when you go around asking people, you know, and seeking their opinion, and from them make a. And istishara is on, and then you ask those who know. You, know, ask, you don't ask random people. <laughs> you ask those those who are knowledgeable and those who know the ruling, those who know it, uh, and those that you know who have uh, unknown for the taqwa, you know, unknown for the scrupulousness, the wara, right, and so on. Okay, we're gonna start different today, inshallah. Wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil alamin. Min al-Fatiha, na Allah rizqan min al-Riyan. Wa amalan khal fi al-Maghbul al Hussatani Jalal al Huda wa Yusuru bi Qabul al Hussatani Al Rahim wa Alimina. ومشايخنا وذوي الحفظ علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فاتح فاتح بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلى آله Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashra la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.